sit back, strap in, and get ready for After Hours with TC Rastani. This is Abigail Harwich, executive producer, welcoming you to the show. And now, TC Rastani! Hey there, welcome to the After Hours with T.C. Rustani, the podcast. I'm T.C. Rustani, emanating from the palatial podcast penthouse here at Rustani Productions. And we got an unbelievable show for you. We got Ricky Bittman in the house. I'm bumping away. Hey. We got South Boston Jeff. What's happening, folks? We got Quincy Briscoe. And joining us on the phone, the one and the only, the living legend, Colonel Bo Montana, for a health update. What's going on, Colonel? Hey, T.C. Hello, boys. Well... Well, um, well, they said I could walk around, which I've been doing. I'm in a, I'm in a nice place up in uh, by Bedford, right? You know, and I like to say, I like to say hello to all the fans that I miss and all that. Well, they love, they miss you too. I heard you. Re- you're now. You found your thrill on yeah, Blueberry yeah, Hill. Yeah, you know, TC, that's what I started singing today. Oh, good. I sing, I was singing um, old Fats Domino tune. Yeah, Fats, the fat man. Well, sing us, yeah. a, sing us, sing us a little uh, number there. Sing us Blueberry Hill Bowl. Richie Cunningham. I was going to say, it. Richie Cunningham lives. Yeah. That's that's great, yeah, yeah, Bull. You know. That's awesome, Bull. Let's give you a little round yeah. of applause for that. So, I hear you wanted to give a shout-out to all your nurses, so go ahead. I'd like to say hello to all the nurses from um, the, the nursing home that I've been. I'd like to say hello to everybody, all the, all, all the great people out there. I believe they're trying to send uh, like a, a car to the studio. Right. Well, basically, uh, once we find out, you know, when you're permanently going to be staying in this place, we'll get the address and we'll have some. We'll have some fans sell you some, uh, sell you some, send you some yeah. uh, postcards, letters, and whatnot. But let's get you settled in there first before we start doing that. Okay, Bull. Yep. Yep. Now I understand that you are like the mayor of this place now. Everybody loves you because I've talked to the nurses, and they're like, "Oh, we love Bull or we love Ringo." That's your code name, and uh, everybody loves you there, Bull. Yes, I do. Now, what kind of activities do you do? Well, uh, well, in the morning we get up and uh, we have our breakfast and then we we go like uh, down to a little place where they have the games and all that. Oh yeah, a little uh, slot machines and uh, whatnot. No, no slot machines. Oh, oh not like yet. Uh, pool tables and no, such. It's a, it's a, reg- it's a regular, regular game. Business. Like right. Stratego right. and Hangman and all, like all those kind of games? No. You Chinese play. checkers? Can we say that anymore? No, Why not? No. The foosball. It's a nice way, a nice way you could play uh, cards. They play, uh, the ladies play the mahjong. Yeah. Oh, cards. You, you pay, you're playing for money like in the uh, showers at uh, Cuckoo's Nest? They got bingo. This place there. doesn't sound like any fun at all. Do they yeah. got? Do they got bingo, Ringo? Yes, they do. All right, fantastic. Win some cash. Yeah. So that's good, buddy. Well, it's good to hear from you. I know I hear from you every day, but I knew that the fans out there wanted to hear an update. It's been a couple, about a month since we had you on, and we're checking in on you, making sure you're okay. I'm. Uh, I just want to say hello to the fans that that, that, that you and I know, fans. If you want to send a letter, you can drop it off to the to the famous uh, TC uh, headquarters there. there. There you go. But what I will do is I will call your nurses and I will get I will get the address and then I'll put I'll put it out on social media so fans can send you you know cards and letters and postcards and all that other fun right. stuff. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, buddy. So what do you got planned for tonight? Well. Uh, I know. I'm just watching the, watching a, a couple of the movies. Oh yeah, anything yeah. good? No, I'm I'm just watching the, the regular TV because that's all I'm just watching. All right. Well, that's well, it's something to pass the time. 
So Very unbelievable, cool. Bull. So I know you I know it's getting past your bedtime because we're recording this kind of late at night. So what we'll do is uh, we'll we'll sign off and I'll get all that information and I will give it to the fans. I promise you that, and they'll send you cards, letters, and all that other fun stuff. Okay. All right, buddy. You have a good night. Say anything anything final to say to the fans out there. Um, I love these fans. Keep on sending them letters and cards to the studio. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Happy St. Patrick's okay. Day. Talk to you later, Bill. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. Bull Montana. All right. That was a quick little update from my buddy, Bull. And uh, I know I'm going to be talking to his nurses up at his mm. facility. We'll get that address so people can send him cards and letters. And wanted, I'd give you his cell phone number, but he doesn't have one. No. <laughs> So, I I, you know, I got to tell you, though, they got to do something about the entertainment in these places. Like, well, why can't they, you know, have a little fun? Well, I looked at where he's staying. Yeah. They have a TV station there. Really? They have an old little TV facility. Wow. So he could be down there doing shows. Jeez, send Eloy Tap his way. And I'll send everybody his way over oh. there. So we'll find out what's going on with Colonel Bull I think Bull Chip Montana. should pay him a visit. I think Chip should pay a visit as well. <laughs> yeah, and TV and, uh, station, all he needs now is a couch. Well, I'm, I'm sure they have it up there. You know, <laughs> drag one off, off the beach somewhere. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We found this couch on the beach. Jaws now. Eagle ball. They smell a little funny, but don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's Full of like, jellyfish. It's low tide. Sand sand fleas. Fish. Yeah, starfish. <laughs> now, I don't want to alarm everybody here on the program, but mm -hmm. I, I got some news that one of our co-host on this show yeah. is going to have a little surgery. And that oh. by a person, by the way, is Quincy Briscoe. Holy crap, Ola. Oh, he doesn't look happy about it. Well, what I was told is about how easy this is. Uh, now. Is this that shortening of the Johnson surgery you keep boasting <laughs> <Yeah>. about? <laughs> now, now I don't feel that it's not that bad at all now. It's well, just going to be a real quick in and out and a fast recovery. Well, mm -hmm. there you go. I, 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 I From, know that feeling. Because well, the, they showed me what this thing is on the computer. Can, can I tell everybody what it is? Yeah. Okay, Quincy's going to have cataract surgery. Oh, that's an easy one. Yeah, I've had, well, like, uh, yeah. I've had that when I was eight. Yeah. No problem. So what they're going to like, Quincy was a little nervous when he called me, told me he's going to get some cataract surgery. And I said, listen, actually going to the dentist is yeah. worse than getting yeah. cataract surgery. It's very common now. Mm -hmm. So Come what on. they're going to do is they're going to put you in a little chair. They're going to sedate you. They're going to open your eye like Alex in Clockwork Orange, take a little <laughs> laser, cut your eye, take out the clouded uh, conversation lens, yep. and put on a new one, and you'll be good. You'll be, you'll be bionic. When you wake up, your pants will be down around your ankles. <laughs> no, the difference is I do good things with bionics. And Bo will be down there on his new couch. <laughs> now, because uh, the thing is, when they get granted these things, um, I want to do good things. You know, not uh, That's the thing that these people are going to learn. Now, uh, okay, well. Well, thanks for, for that easing my nerves. Yeah. You just took, it's like I said, it's a big weight lifted off of me. I took my dad for uh, cataract surgery. I'm going to say back in the late 80s no no had to be mid 90s and it was the, the surgery had kind of developed into a new way of doing it and Is they it gave really? him they gave him a videotape of the surgery and it was basically a close-up on my old man's eye and huh. they, they put and they just go in there and they just take all the clouded stuff out and then your eye is all clear. And it was amazing. My father loved watching this thing. And then you get a patch to wear for a few days and you're fine. No pain or nothing. Yeah, it's basically. I guess like the patch from what I've seen on some of these TV shows, like you wear for a couple of days to protect it. Then uh, they can put a nice picture inside the patch of a nice pretty lady for you to look at. Or milk. Oh. oh yeah, Bob. Um, <laughs> but the thing that like, uh, that surprises me is like. Um, they don't uh, cover both eyes because um, when the patients, uh, I can remember on one, one of these shows, very medical and very fond of them, um, why do both eyes have to be covered? Because that way you, the good eye doesn't do the work. Exactly. Yeah, you know, I'm surprised that, um, but uh, they know what they're doing. You know, um, it's really easy instructions to follow. The All the successful pirates only had one patch over one eye. There was a few that had the two patches, but they didn't do too well. And Snake Plissken. Yeah. <laughs> They'll probably uh, get some eye drops, you know, um, um, when they're through with it, and have me take eye drops. I'm very good at following directions um, on every single one of these things they supply. Um, 
of if there's any questions, I'll ask these physicians. Well, this is this isn't going to happen right away. I heard from the grapevine. Oh, when when is it? To the surgical team, that this is probably going to happen sometime at the end of May, early June. Okay, he's around the corner though. So okay. he was just diagnosed with the cataract. Nice. So it's. Uh, well, you know, I just want to uh, participate in the parades uh, too. Um, it's like well, the good. I'll, uh, because uh, uh, Memorial Day Parade, that's very important, you know. Uh, it is, it is. You now, every uh, activity that they have is important, you know. Mm. Then, uh, so we'll work it into our schedule. And Well, all the best to you. And you know what? If you get laid up in the hospital, we'll have cards and letters sent to you, too. Yeah. Doesn't sound like I'm going to be laid up there very long. You know, um, they call it an, uh, what do they call it? Out, out procedure or something? Outpatient. Outpatient. You'll be, oh, you'll be, then, uh, you'll something- be out. Then there's not the draw line at all. Um, no. Be back, you know, um, drinking. Um, it's not like that episode of Hot to Hot. Remember that episode? Remember, you remember the show Hot to I Hot? I do, yeah. Robert Wagner. Robert Wagner. He, was, he, he went to an, uh, uh, Stephanie Powers. Stephanie Powers. She was uh, hot. She was, she's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. By the way, my name is Max. Who you got take you? care of them both, which ain't easy, because when I met... It was murder. <laughs> what was his name? I'm Sam. What was Max. His name? Max. Right. So there was an episode where someone was out to get Jonathan Hart. Okay. And he bought off an eye doctor. So okay. when Jonathan Hart went into looking into the viewfinder to get to check his eyes, uh, two spikes came out. Nice. And blinded Jonathan Hart. Wow, Ew. that's pretty intense. It was. It was. I remember now when I. <laughs> I've like, always thought of that episode. Yeah, I've always remembered it. Always true remembered story. It. When I went to get my eyeglasses, my first pair of eyeglasses oh. in, ni- in 1998, <laughs> yeah. before I looked in, I pushed on it <laughs> to make sure no one pulled a Jonathan Hart on me. All right? Ow! That would have sucked. Oh yeah, you remember things like that. Oh you, yeah, because that dead alone. You know, even when you like get you know, put your finger in your eye. For, you, oh Christ! Yeah, that's terrible. Are you gonna spike? Oh. Not not good. No. Not not good at all. No. But they won't do that to you, Quincy. No, um, they have um, dozens and dozens of uh, good physicians out there. Well, You'll be able to see really well after that. And they uh, already have picked. <laughs> You'll be able to sing very well. Be able to see. You never know. Of course, I'll, I'll sing. Now, I'll, no, no, thousands and thousands of uh, good uh, I, uh, physicians out there, Quincy. Yeah. I mean, saying dozens and dozens doesn't make us feel very good. <laughs> it doesn't right, like, like uh, Maybe I'll get one of those good ones. Yeah, maybe true. I'll get one of those. Uh, yeah. But uh, okay, yeah, I'll say thousands. Thousands and thousands and thousands of good physicians are out there. How's if you that? go in and the doctor has two eye patches on, just head for the door. Yeah. Go. Or well, born um, to lose, tattooed on his hands. <laughs> <laughs> or if his name's Jonathan Hart. Yeah. Or if he goes, hi, everybody. <laughs> well, I'm only like, observing what I learned about when they work on the guys. Um, yeah, well, um, well, when they're through, um, I'm just, to a little bit, but to my surprise, they don't cover it together, right? Because that way it uh, doesn't do the work of the lousy guy again. Mm-hmm. But, but uh, let, um, let, let's just say, Quincy, if you walk in there and bulls the doctor, yeah. leave. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, All right. I would. would I that, would. Uh, that, or that doctor from Cannonball Run. <laughs> <laughs> doctor Fritz Van Helting, but I, my, in my line of profession, I seldom need more than this. I think that would or actually be, he, he would actually be better than Paul, but that's a different story yeah, for different that was, uh, that was Jackie Lam, actually my idol. When I was a little kid, I, <laughs> I, 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 like I, 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 and I saw him in the cowboy movies and Cannonball Run. Yep. I said, oh, look at that eye. I, oh, Lord, give me an eye like Great that. Great character. Actor, Jack. Lord, give me an eye like that, a lazy eye like that someday. And the Lord granted me a lazy eye. I want uh, what I didn't know was uh, the actor uh, Jackie Lam got that lazy eye for uh, like uh, when he was in high school. Uh, he got in a fight with another kid, and uh, he uh, Jackie Lam was bigger than this kid, and uh, it was over a girl. And this little punk uh, took a, a pencil out of his pocket and stuck him right in the eye with Ooh, it. Jesus! Yeah, that's how uh, she must he must have been hot. Gee. Yeah, the uh, little punk. I wonder if he was ever on a love boat, was he? <laughs> he had to have been yeah. a fantasy island. <laughs> oh, but a uh, great actor, great character actor. Yeah, he was. Yeah, I remember him well. So I was in the limo the other day, driving mm. home with Abby. Mm-hmm. We, we, we did a re- an audio recording, mm-hmm. and the subject came up. Th- 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 favorite fast food burger. Oh, okay. Really? Really. I was like, I was shocked. We had to go to the drive-thru because she was, she was doing rehearsals okay. for one of her, uh, you know, her, her acting gigs. Mm-hmm. And we were giving a ride home because we were passing that way doing business and whatnot. And she's like, oh, Tacey, I need to go to like a drive-thru. I really mm-hmm. need a burger. And, uh, you know, there were three of the, you know, the three major burger places that mm-hmm. were there. 
And uh, it, for the record, she got Burger King. Okay. Okay. How come Burger King? Because it was closer to her condo. Okay. Because uh, uh, you would think, like, uh, no offense, but a, an actor, a big hostess, of all the places. Um, well, she had a craving for a fast food burger. So it was the proximity. So it's either Wendy's, Burger King, or McDonald's. Hmm. Hmm. Well, you know, um, she made a good choice, you know, but I'm just surprised. And for the um, record, she got a baking double cheeseburger. That's the one. I'm going to tell yeah, you right yeah, now. I usually, well, whenever I go, I usually try to get a bacon double cheeseburger. Yeah. And uh, and the limo driver. Yeah. You know the limo driver. Yeah. Oscar. Yep. He he butted in the conversation because he's more than a limo driver. He's a buddy of ours. And he, he, he kind of talks a little like Cousin Leo. Not much. <laughs> and he goes, have you ever tried to drive... With a with a with a with a double whopper with cheese, you Whoa. can't. No, that's not. And he's right. Yeah. Because when I used to eat double whopper with cheeses and try to drive around, it was you know you'd be better off being drunk driving than you were trying to eat a, a double whopper with cheese. <laughs> you want to know something strange? <laughs> I have never in my entire many decades on this face of this earth have had a Big Mac or a Whopper. Really? Never. Okay. If you had a choice, in my opinion. Yeah. The Whopper outdoes the Big Mac. Okay, I, I would see that because I, I, I was saying a lot of people really crap on Burger King. No, no, no. But I like Burger King. Burger King. I can't remember the last time I was in Burger one. Burger King's burgers are superior. I think so. But their fries suck. Oh, oh, uh, there's no <laughs> question. You're right. Their fries are terrible. Hundred percent. All right, so I'm gonna. I'm saying that Burger King burgers are superior to McDonald's and Wendy's. Mm. But if I had a pecking order. Mm. It would be Burger King, Wendy's, and then McDonald's. Okay. With the exception of the double quarter pounder with cheese. That's now that's another one. That's a good one. That alone stands, mm. you know, it blows the Big Mac out of the but water. You know the true t test, for me anyway, and I hope if I mentioned this before on this, stop me because I tell these stories a lot. My go to hangover food was always Burger King. Really? When I talk hangover, like you can't get your head out of the toilet bowl the next right. day. One of those. <laughs> so finally, when things settle down, like when you have this, you have this long day of the dry heaves. We're talking about a good six hours of this. Okay? Really? Okay. Oh, we were talking some monumental hangovers. I probably had maybe four <laughs> times in my life this bad. And every one of those times, the same thing. I would wait till things settled down. And I would drive straight to the Burger King in Dorchester. Okay. I had something against the one in Southie. No offense, Jeff, but I just didn't, something about that one just, I didn't trust it. So I drive to the one in Dorchester. A couple times I had to stop and pull over and dry heave some more. But there's a, when, you, when you're when you hungover, there's a point when you're getting sick the next day where you know that's it. You're not going to get sick anymore. Then you get so hungry, the only thing for me would be a bacon double cheeseburger. A bacon, it's very mustardy. It is. Now what I would do uh -oh. is I would get... I would get the fries there, too, because I wasn't going to go to two places because I wasn't feeling it. So I'd get a large fry, I'd get the bacon double cheeseburger, and for the ride home, I'd get a plain cheeseburger. Okay, <laughs> Just right. to cleanse my palate. I get you. Mm -hmm. no, and I get sort you. of like uh, get everything prepared. Like, something good's coming, this will hold you. Now, did you eat it as you were driving or did just you Just the plain home? one, but just then the I'd get one. home and I'd get back in my pajamas, get the put the honeymooners <laughs> on, and then I would just eat myself back into the land of living. Awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, good. okay. That's, that's my vote. All right, so Burger King your, is your vote. Yeah. All right, South Boston Jeff. Well, uh, I oh, if I can get if I can get White Castle, uh, that that's going to mm. be on top of my list. You know, uh, we were talking about uh, that that at the very uh, last thing. Uh, one like uh, I was just uh, watching Revenge of the Nerds two the other day, oh. and uh, like uh, not, like uh, yeah, not uh, not the best movie, no, but not the still, worst movie no. in the world. And uh, do you remember that that, that little uh, that kid that they picked up along the way, Stuart? <laughs> he got fired from the hotel, and the the, the nerds uh, took him under his wing and made friends with him. Yep. After he got fired from the hotel, he went to work at the uh, Orlando White Castle. <laughs> I was like, hey, we were just talking about that because mm. uh, he was wearing that uh, the apron, the White Castle apron for the remainder of the movie. So you're saying White Castle, even though the portions are really, really small. No, but uh, I would say like, uh, but I actually have a Burger King once a week. Really? Yeah, nice. yeah because uh, yeah, every time I go into Boston, I'll, I'll pick up a, a double cheeseburger and what I'll do is I'll take it i'll order uh two double cheeseburgers mm. uh plain with bacon gotcha. so double hamburgers with bacon yeah. but in a, a medium order of uh their onion rings and i'll Ooh. take and i'll uh, take a pot both uh and i'll put the onion rings inside the uh nice. double cheeseburger nice. it's uh the, the it makes it all go down 
Right, perfectly. Yeah. So nice, nice. I gotta say, I, I I have nothing against Burger King. I, I, you could be. I mean, there is no White Castle around here, so mm. uh, the I guess Burger King could have my vote. Unless okay. you can get me to Sol- Sullivan's on the on South Boston. Uh, well, that's not really fast food, though. No, but that, those are good double cheeseburgers. They, I yeah. saw them when we went there a couple yeah. of years back. Now, um, now, Quincy, you, I know you're a connoisseur of Hamburg's. Yeah. Wh- which one is your favorite? Is it McDonald's, Burger King, or Wendy's? I'd have to say Wendy's. I knew you were going to say Wendy's. Okay, why Wendy's? Because Wendy's um, is a step up. You know, um, you know uh, for... When someone wants to uh, have a step up, and uh, you know what, I've tasted one of their burgers and their fries and chocolate shakes. You know what, they're pretty good. I guess uh, Wendy's, um, uh, I don't know for a fact how they do it. Uh, is it on the flame or is it on the stove? But or you had uh, that, that old lady, Claire Pella, yelling in your ear yeah. the whole time. Where's, Where's the beef? The beef? Where's the beef? She was great. Um, I don't know, know for a fact how they cook it, but... Yeah, what their their burgers are pretty decent. I believe Wendy's are grilled or f- f- fried. They're, They're fried flat like, tops, like on a grill. Yeah, on the griddle. No, no, no yes. griddle, griddle. Not yeah, griddle. never once. Yeah, never once uh, frozen. Yeah, they meat. don't serve frozen patties. And because the only fast food place that I can think of, the McDonald's, Wendy's, or Burger King, Burger King is flame broiled. Yep. Well, no, I um, but I I can. You just said the words for all of us. You're gonna pay for a good hamburger, not a f- uh, frozen burger, not at Wendy's anyway. Right. I hope not. You know, uh, I can remember when I used to flip the burgers. See, see, I remember when I was a kid. Wendy's is like an adult fast food place. Yes, because they had baked potatoes they, and chili, you know, sophisticated, and salads and you know, stuff like that. They didn't have clowns and hamburglers no, or anything like that. No. Or a guy in a clown, uh, in a crown. Mm-hmm. Well, that's because you're, you're at a kid's restaurant. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, you gotta consider like you're taking a little two to four year old out. So you're going to give them clowns. But when you go to a place like Wendy's, that's an adult. Uh, right, Dave Thomas. Yeah, Dave Thomas. Um, you know how much of a genius that guy was? He was the one man who invented the twirling bucket of chicken at KFC. He did? He was He was the apprentice of Colonel Sanders. Wow. That's that's good. That's very good to right. know. Because um, Colonel Sanders is a treat, you know, um, every now and then. It is. And now, But the twirling bucket is a classic you know, uh, old school sign that people... Right. Um, That's usually down south they used to have, though. That's where, well, obviously, Kentucky is, down south. But uh, so, all right, so your vote is for Wendy's. Yeah, why not? Uh, did, get, you, did you have a crush on Wendy or something? No, no. but... Uh, <laughs> Want to slip a little meat between her buns? <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't throw out a bed for eating cheeseburgers, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to dip your fry? Is that what you wanted to do? <laughs> in her What's sip? your vote? I said Burger King. Oh, you did? Okay, so it's okay, three against um, one. Wow. Now, let's do a little added thing here. Who has the best French fries? From a McDonald's. Wendy's. I know. Oh, McDonald's. McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. Why do you think McDonald's has... Uh, they're they, iconic. They're just they're just the right amount of salt. Yeah. And uh, Wendy's is number two. Burger King has never had good no, French fries. No, never. 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 I think it's my guess, though, that every one of these restaurants... Um, uh, cooked you know, in a vat. You know, that's a shortening. And then they uh, heat up the shortening. Um, well, whatever the oil uh, burger can yeah, use is all it is, it's yeah. just good, clean, clean shortening, which has to be changed. <laughs> shortening. Has to be changed every other day. Little baby shortening, love shortening, shortening. Um, Mammy's little baby love shortening the, bread. <laughs> that's good, yeah. Uh, that's very good. Now, Quincy, did you work at, at a McDonald's or a Wendy's or Burger King? How do you know this stuff? It, uh, I just know um, oh, these things. Uh, oh, yeah, you just know these things, yeah. huh? Um, shake machines and uh, um, uh, taking a pot, put together um, uh, correctly and lubricated uh, with clean, like, um, Good quality. Um, Lubricated. We're back yeah. to Wendy. Yeah. Well, I know. Every one of these like shake machines are taken apart, put together with a special lubricant to make it work right. They have okay. to be taken apart, clean, washed, dry, and clean, sanitized, put back together. And the yeah, French fries, um, I have to be done and clean, short, and they change every the other day on a certain timing basis. But the burgers at each and every one of these restaurants are done differently. Um, one is fried, one is broiled. Um, uh, the other restaurant, what do you think Wendy's is? That's um, Wendy's is, oh. is is fried. I thought you were saying Wendy's did them two different ways. Well, yeah. So uh, and Wendy's does Wendy's does a good job. So, so Don't get me wrong. You know, a little investigating here. You know, you're a detective on another show. That's right. You, you know way too much about this not to have worked in mm. one of these stores. 
Well, the... You're ashamed to admit it? I worked in fast food. Yeah, I've well, worked in all of them myself. Well, let's just say I have my I have sources. A... Ah. Uh, you have sources? You have fast food sources? I, well, I, uh, well I'm not, it's my job to know these things, you know. And... Are, are you best friends with Grimace? Is that the truth? No. Radio no. Grimace? Right. Well, who's that Irish one they, uh, around St. Patrick's? Isn't that Gradio is, Grimace? Is it Gradio Uncle Grimace? Uncle Gradio okay. Grimace or something like that? Yeah. Those were horrible, by the way. Those, uh, I never... The shamrock I, shakes? Yeah. People okay. who drink milkshakes and eat them with cheeseburgers should be run out of the country. Why is that? Oh, it's disgusting. Well, come on. Hey, no, like, um, no, no, no. Who doesn't love a shake? Two know, different um, things that should be enjoyed at two separate times. You don't like shakes? I do, but I, I mean, okay, you're eating a nice double cheese, bacon double cheeseburger with the mustard on it. Then you're sipping a vanilla milkshake. Or a mint one. Fair. Well, do you like shakes, though? I do, but I, I'm saying this whole thing where they think then, uh, I'm going to have a cheeseburger and a milkshake. I take it to you like and a tonic. You just slap in the face when you say that. Okay, so let's have let's have a scenario. You went to uh, McDonald's yeah, huh? yeah. and you got a double quarter pounder with cheese mm-hmm. and fries. I take and you a tonic, right? To and, go with your burger. And a soda. Right. Would you then get a shake? No. You wouldn't. It's a, like a milkshake to me is like, okay, it's it's in the evening. You've already had dinner time and everything like when you're a kid. And we'd all say, let's go down to Frosty Village, corner of I Street, right across from sure. the beach. And my folks would get a banana boat, and I would sometimes get one of those cones you could dip, or I would get a nice uh, chocolate milkshake. Okay. Or my dad would call it a frap. He's a old frap, school. Yeah, but a yeah, frap, yeah. Go down shake. and get a frap. Remember when you go to Brigham's and you'd order the black and white frap, and they'd bring it over and they'd pour it in there, and then they'd leave the silver cup yes. so you could yeah. refill it again? Right. Where are those fucking days? I'm sorry. They're gone. <laughs> I mean, the friendlies used to have amazing fraps. I would go to I would go mm-hmm. to Brigham's and sit at the counter and order a vanilla Coke, and they would make it with the Coca Cola syrup and the vanilla and the the soda. Every Christmas time when I was a kid, we would go into downtown crossing, mm-hmm. see the lights, see the window, yep. and then go to the Brigham's right yes. there. That was a friggin' awesome treat. Yeah, it was. Uh, those days are gone. They really yeah, are. Nothing, I, mean, nothing. I mean, my uh, when I worked uh, when I, one of my first jobs and everything when this uh, when, when the local Shaw's was uh, called Saratani's and mm. uh, the, on every day uh, every uh, my tradition on payday was to go over to uh, walk over to Brigham's and uh, get myself the cookies and cream frap and everything. Oh. So like uh, with vanilla syrup, I always made sure to tell them that. But you had to stir it with your straw and everything because all that broken up cookie would end up in a clump if you didn't. Mm-hmm. But it was that uh, that was my treat every single week. Cool. Brigham's had the best ice cream. They had they really great did. stuff. Now, Quincy, I know you're not going to admit that if you worked or know somebody worked at a fast food place, but we know someone on this panel that worked at the McDonald's who can give us all the trade secrets, and that's South Boston Jeff. Really? Um, that, that That's good? Yeah. I mean, uh, like uh, Big Mac sauce is just uh, mustard uh, mixed with uh, mayonnaise and Thousand Island dressing, if, in case you Two didn't know that. Two all special sauce, the special sauce. Yeah. Lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame yeah. seed bun. Yeah. What's the secret sauce of Bronco Burger? <laughs> you know what other... You might be able to get um, a shake like close to uh, what you're looking for. Is what they call it. Johnny Rockets or Rockets or... Never eaten into Johnny Rockets. Is that the name of it? For, yeah, 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 you see them a lot of casinos and malls. The and last stuff. time I ate at a Johnny Rockets was at Logan International Airport when I was going to Vegas. Mm, I don't and think they had I, had, I, I don't know if they have it anymore, but no. it, it was like when you squeeze the burger... Mm-hmm. It was like getting an oil change in your car. Ah, it, was just, it was just like <laughs> total grease. You know who else had a grease burger, but it was really good. No wonder I had coronary bypass surgery. <laughs> well, what about their shakes then? I'm not rockets. talking about oh. that. I'm talking about the grease burger. Oh, it was a Dairy Queen. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I definitely had a Dairy Queen burger oh, one point in my Those life. were good. Yeah. Those were real good. Yeah. So, Jeff, getting back to the McDonald's there, I don't, I don't know if you had to sign a uh, non-disclosure agreement, an NDA. No. But what, uh, what, what were some of the other secrets about McDonald's? Like, well, uh, if you uh, like, uh, if you ever watch the training videos of uh, McDonald's, like uh, that is where the like uh, actors like uh, Damon Wayans and Kelly Caulfield got their first break. Mm-hmm. The, the, those uh, those cast members of In Life and Color. They first they were in all those McDonald's training videos. Okay. That's one of the things. Uh, when you have to throw the the salt on the French fries, they make you like uh, do the golden arches with your arm. Dude, dude. Really? Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> like uh, when you're throwing the uh, salt or the seasoning. I like yeah, that. they make you do the big M with the uh, salt. Uh, See, I like stuff like that. That's cool. Did Ray Kronk ever come into your McDonald's? Uh, no, no, no. 
Did you ever see that movie, The Founder? Yes. It's a great movie. You've seen that yet? You would probably like that. Yeah, uh, but with uh, Michael, like Michael Keaton. Keaton. Yeah, yes. that's a yes. good movie. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, I saw that on a flight. I can't remember where it was flying. To. That was a, I mean, see. I used to visit Jeff up at that McDonald's, mm. but it's no longer there. And uh, you know who used to frequent that place? Only people in New England are going to get this uh, reference. Dana Hersey. Oh my God! Yeah, from Widow Knock. Yeah, the movie oh, loft. The, guy. the movie, movie loft. loft. Yeah, he had quite well, a. Oh, he had quite TV sweaters. through years. Yeah, We're talking about yeah, the Dana Hersey. Uh, Don't speak over somebody else, Quincy. Yeah. Go ahead, Jeff. I uh, yeah, I uh, like uh, I, I never got to meet him, but uh, I was there when he uh, walked in uh, uh, one of those times. I was like, "Why didn't you tell me?" And everything. <laughs> oh, and the, we just wanted him to have a like a. Uh, I would have said hi to uh, like uh, to, uh, to Dana Hersey in his sweaters. He's kind of like a Adam West type of guy, you know. He reminded me a lot of Adam. Yeah, West. he does. Yeah, I, I get that. I get that. You yeah. know who I heard ate in the Burger King in Southie? No, Ruth Gordon. Really? Yeah, it was like uh, all the buzz. Like all the old ladies were talking about it one time in Southie. My mother goes, she was telling us, she goes, yeah, Ruth Gordon was in the uh, uh, Burger King down on Broadway. Were they filming I, a movie or No, she you? was just there. I she, can believe she had, it. She, she's, uh, she seems like she's very humble and everything. Yeah, I think she, she has angry. ties to this area. Almost. So there's something like that. She, Not, won, she won an Emmy Award for her guest appearance on Taxi. Did she really? Oh, she that was did. a great episode. She was great. Mm-hmm. All the uh, Every Which Way But Loose movies. Oh, my God. With the, with the Unbelievable. bikers. Unbelievable. Speaking yeah. of, can I, can I read something for you? I, I, yes, you, you, you were showing me this before the show. And now, I don't know if this is a real product or not, but all this talk about mayonnaise. Jeff, did you ever hear of Bozo brand mayonnaise? I have not, no. Okay. But it's uh, based on the clown? Yes, this is an ad now. I'm going to show it to you after this. <laughs> I so see this, the well, ad. So now the ad reads, all kids are deranged for Bozo egg turnip mayonnaise, okay? Egg turnip. I Ooh. try it. I watch his face go down. Now listen to the way they describe this, okay? It's homogeneous. Kids go positively batty over bozo egg turnip mayonnaise. Only bozo would mix the pungent sulfurous aroma of eggs with the earthy, nearly non-existent flavor of fresh turnips. And then whip them together with a healthful 100% cottonseed oil to make a taste sensation that your whole family will remember for the rest of their mouths. Try it on a classic turnip and egg omelet for an exponentially zippy double egg Turnip twist. Oh, Bozo <laughs> Frank, you've got me sold. So wow. all American. Kids Bozo. are deranged. Now, you sent me that picture. Didn't one of that kid look like a froggy reincarnated? Yeah, from the, uh, you, yeah, or a little bit like Cousin Leo ish, too. Like, is, is it maybe a little, like a little kid? <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Bozo, can I, uh, can I try I mean, to- look at the kids are deranged. When you kind of think about it, doesn't Cousin Leo kind of sound like Bozo a little bit? He does a little bit. <laughs> I mean, look at this kid. Oh, Jesus. He wants his yeah, turnip he, mayonnaise. If you're, if you're oh, watching this on YouTube, like... you can see the picture right now on the screen. Kids are deranged. Another fine product from Larry Harmon Pictures Foods, Carson, California. Wow. No, I never got to try the Superman peanut butter, but people always said it was gross. Yeah, anything. I never tried that, too. I forgot about that. You know, I was watching Superman one of those. Superman peanut butter? Yeah. yeah, Superman peanut butter. Uh, peanut butter you can look up to. And, I was watching uh, that uh, Food That Built America. Have you ever seen this show? Sure. Great show. And they were doing the peanut butter wars, and it was Jif Skippy and Peter Pan. I don't remember. I remember. I don't know why they didn't include Superman. That was the show where I found out that Dave Thomas did the Kentucky Fried Chicken. Really? See, that, I, I love that show, by the way. But I guess... um. When they came up with Peter Pan peanut butter, they were just like, "We're just going to take this name," and then they didn't copyright the name, I guess, or the name was in, the name was somehow in the free market or whatever they call free domain or whatever, and they just slapped the name Peter Pan on that that just so kids would identify with it. Okay, but the number one peanut brand in the peanut butter brand in the country, what is it? Jif. Jif. To this day, Jif outdid them all. Really? Yep. And you know how? How? Choosy mothers choose Jif. Ah, how could a mother mm-hmm. not consider herself choosy for her kids? Well, yeah, there you go. Well, I guess uh, they, from what I remember, an old school commercial. It's like they say um, they use over a jar and a half of uh, fresh peanuts uh, crushed. I remember that. Yeah. Well, uh, well then uh, that makes two of us. A lot of us remember these old school commercials. And you know where Skippy came from? There was an old movie in the '30s with Jackie Cooper was the star, and he played a young kid named Skippy. He was this Wheel and Dealer kid. Jackie Cooper, from who of the, course, was in Superman. Was, uh, uh, what's his name? Perry White. Perry White. Yeah. Now, what was the one that Annette Funicello did? What? Peanut butter. Remember she was a spokesperson? I think it was Jif. Was it Jif? I think it was. I can see her saying, Jif, you might have choose Jif. Okay. 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 It's been a while. Um, we keeping you up? 
No, no, I'm just. Uh. <laughs> well, he's he's too busy. Over he's there. very relaxed tonight. He's he's well. He had a good dinner. That's why. Oh, nice. And he's been listening to the. You know, we have one of those Google machines uh-huh. where you can go like you know. Oh, you can tell it to do stuff. Tell it to do. I don't want to say it now because it may activate it. Yeah. And he's over there playing all these classic old tunes. I do over that there. sometimes. When I'm sitting around. So I go he was jamming Alexa. to it over there. Yeah. Speaking of good dinners, you know where I'm going tomorrow night? No. One of your old haunts, the Mount Vernon Restaurant. Mount Vernon Restaurant. It's funny you should say that. Hold on. Where do you hear this? Let's hear it. The Mount Vernon Restaurant. Listen to the fruit Just pie they get singing, huh? downtown Boston. There's a place that's got taste and style. Come for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They're open late so you can stay a while. The Twin Lobster Special is something to see And you're always welcomed by the Henry family Delicious home-cooked meals by the fireplace At the Mount Vernon Restaurant what do you think? He was like some kid who just decided, like, hey, let, let Cousin Jeffrey do the jingle. Was 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 uh, was Mason Reese not available? Uh, <laughs> and his tap dancing. <laughs> uh, for, was it Mason Reese or was it? Uh, Mason Reese was tap dancing on the Mike Douglas show. Who, he was the spam kid or yeah. the, or the oh, devil no, hand. Uh, Underwood devil hand. Right, right, right. But I'm going to get my corned beef and cabbage tomorrow Bro, since really? we are a week away from St. Patty's Day. I love the Mount Vernon restaurant. Mount I haven't been there fantastic. since. Fantastic. I go for the. Yeah. I still go for the brunch all the time. It's yeah. uh, my uh, like. Uh, it's my father's go-to place, uh, mm. uh, one of his go-to places now. But now he's uh, really into falamos. But uh, oh, nothing wrong with falamos. That's where the meat yes. falls off yeah. the bone, right? I was, there, I was there a couple weeks ago, and I saw the drummer from That's Ben Gardner's boat there. Really? He was throwing down, Kevin. So, Kevin so, you, so you go in there. So the Mount Vernon. When yeah. I was a kid, when anybody who died in a family or, <laughs> yeah. or a family friend, they always had what is that thing called at the after? The, oh, the mercy meal. Mercy meal. Mercy. The what? The acol acolytes or whatever, whatever the hell the technical term of it is. Mount Vernon there was restaurant. Another name for you, right? uh, we used to go there, and everybody used to get the twin lobster special, just yep. like the song says. Yep. There's steamers. I mean, when we used to go there, we used to get the onion blossom that was awesome. They used to have the great popovers. Oh, oh, because listen, can you tell me the rhythm of this? Because I want to. <laughs> He would, I want to make these. He, I, I want. Do you have an extra like like six pads of butter right now? I really <laughs> want to put it on you. But the brunch, Jeff's 100 yeah, percent right. Yeah. It's still, is it still 18 bucks? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Holy shit, really? Bucks, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, go in there with uh, 25 bucks in your pocket. You're all set. Oh, we used to go there. Maybe, when do we go? Like once a month? Yeah, at least. It at was, least. That place was great. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have a, have to have a cheat day and go to that You really place. should, because I mean, maybe the four of us should go. Oh. I mean, you don't know what they, you never knew what they, the, the, the chef is going to whip out of that uh, the, the real kitchen. I mean, it could be a prime rib or it could be a turkey and everything. Mm, right. I, I mean, yeah. their, their omelets were outstanding. Mm. Their their pancakes, their, their French toast. I would oh, do that someday. Oh, so good. Maybe we should do it for Easter. We'll have our pre-Easter and we had And we went to the bar. We didn't, we didn't go to the restaurant. Yeah, we that's where we're going bar. tomorrow night. I've never eaten in the bar there. Oh, it's very nice. So tomorrow night, we're going to go sit in the bar, and I'm going to have my corned beef and cabbage. Tasha's going to have the roast beef dinner because she doesn't do the corned beef and cabbage. Well, they, they used to have amazing pot roast in there. Mm-hmm. Everything. everything the, 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 you know what? That place has been there for almost 100 yeah. years. So yeah. they're doing something right. Yeah, and I've never had a bad meal there. One t- <laughs> but it's been a while. Uh, no, that, we, we should get Cousin Lee in here. Because I was dying for him to come down here. We were in there one night. And his other friends at the Kowloon. And we, we had, there was two waitresses that were fighting over this giant meatball. Oh, all right, waitresses. We were near the waitress station because the place was packed one night. <laughs> so we're in there, and this 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 waitress who looked like Bam Bam Terry Gordy. Oh, all right. I forgot, I forgot what her name was, and she comes. I can just see this. She came in, and we're, we're sitting there eating, and all we just hear is, "Who ate my meatball?" <laughs> and Leo, like, like, what the hell? He like jumped out of his seat, and they went at it like King Kong and Godzilla oh. over where, who ate this meatball. That's terrible. But uh, all that place is a hundred percent. You know, if anybody's listening, ever wants to come to the Boston area. They're right in Somerville on the Cambridge Rhine, right near the Sullivan NBTA stop, yep. and you will not get a bad deal mm. in that place. Take an Uber, because you can't, the parking is non-existent. Oh, there is no, <laughs> no, it's horrible. There. It That's terrible. the only thing bad about that place. Is yeah, the, the parking's bad. Remember when they opened up another Mount Vernon, they opened up two of them? Yeah, where the hell was the other they one? They opened up where the ship was. Remember on Route One? Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that didn't make nothing. It. Yeah. That place was cursed. Yeah. Nothing lasted no, nothing. in there. No, that's right. And then there was another one on the uh, on Revere, not Revere Beach, but the one the, the road in the Marsh Road. Yeah, that's right. Right around the corner from I know exactly what you're talking the, about uh, from the roundabout. Yeah, in Revere. yeah. That's where the other mountain road didn't last long either. No. 
You can't beat the original. I can't. No, this. no, you mm-hmm. can't. There's something about that place, though. Well, you know what? We're gonna. You know, we, we went to the hot dog place uh, last year. And around the this time. is like a much quicker ride. This for is. Us. Oh yeah. So we could <laughs> if, we, if we overeat, we don't have to go home to wait too long to get home. I think we should. Quincy, you, you, I don't know if you've ever been to the Mount Vernon. You ever been to the Mount Vernon? No. Where is that now? And I just told you, it's in Somerville. <laughs> oh, all right, well, well, I got these gift certificates burning a hole in my pocket. They got milk Ooh. there. You know, you don't have to worry Mount about Vernon, it. Mount Vernon, a couple of them. Wow. 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 All right. So, all right. Well, you heard it's it here. so happening. I mean, I just brought it up, and he's got his po- pocket full of uh, gift certificates. Well, we used to see his dad in there all, every, almost like every Friday night when we used to go there practically every week. Yeah. But, but your dad now is he's taking a shine to the Floramos, huh? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, What's, his go-to there? What's his go-to there? What's oh, his go-to? Ro- well, the roast beef. Mm. Uh, the, like, uh, yeah, the roast beef uh, dinner. But uh, he also, uh, like... Uh he he enjoy uh, yeah he enjoys their the the steak and lamb tips there uh, the, yeah they let surface. me give you a tip about this place that nobody knows what they won a contest in the north end of Boston mm-hmm. for the best meatball in the north end they won it really yes the meatballs are four dollars and twenty five cents each you will not get a better meatball when they bring the bread out yeah order a couple of meatballs I'm telling you because then you get the they bring the sauce and you get that bread I'm telling you it's the best appetizer you'll ever have is a meatball from the Floramos. Uh, Tasha and I met the owners uh, down in uh, down at the Pearl Street on New Year's Eve. Johnny and I think his wife's name is Kerry, and they were very nice to us. We talked; they recognized us from coming in there, of course. And we were telling them our go-to dishes and everything. And they have a half rack of ribs you can get with a half chicken, but you can only get that half chicken if you get it with the half rack of ribs. Getting back to the meatball, don't tell the Terry Gordy waitress about that. No, no, the giant. That's right. We were just talking about the meatball. Right. So meatball. get the meatball, and you can get a half rack of chicken, a half rack of ribs with a half chicken. Phenomenal! Oh yeah, it's probably one of those uh, uh, granny size me uh, that are uh, like the size of a grapefruit or something. And, uh, uh, and they won an award in the North End. Wow. That's a good combination for a buck. In oh, it's not a dollar. World, that <laughs> it's a figure speech. Yeah, yeah for a four. Oh, buck. I thought you meant the, 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 that. I it's just it's a figure speech. I guess you want to make. I didn't want you get on there with a dollar and get thrown out. That's all I was worried. No, he's gonna open up that wallet. He's almost as bad a tightwad as bull. Are you kidding me? Now, Ricky Pittman said this was a dollar. Ricky Pittman who comes in here, you know, he does his podcast. He told me it was a dollar. <laughs> he knows both of you people. <laughs> A combination, uh, of course, you, you need the ribs. And you get you get a side, or like a potato, or you get steak fries. They have some great steak fries there, Quincy, mm-hmm. at uh, Four Ramos. And you get a salad, too. And a tonic. Anything you want. You can get milk if you want it. Well, we're on the we're on the restaurant kick here. Yeah, get big big shout we out. Always always goes back to food. Big shout it. out to Brothers up in Wakefield. Oh, that's a great place. Their haddock dinner. Oh, oh I haven't been there for a while it's and everything, but I used to go there for their, the like uh, they, they, they do a leg of lamb on Tuesdays, mm. a slow cooked leg of lamb. Remember the guy who used to work? There? You like the lamb, the chicken, the pot roast, <laughs> <laughs> the chicken, the pot roast. Last time I went there was with Johnny Maffioli. Good my good buddy. It's been a long time. Really? Yeah. What did you have? I I don't remember. I probably had the uh, like the, um, the 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 shish kebab, the chicken on the skewers with the rice pad pilaf, maybe something like that. Fantastic. But Quincy, have you run into any melon heads? No, not yet. <laughs> well, I've been talking to people down in Southern Connecticut, and uh, they know the story. Really? And, uh, they and they know a place, <laughs> and I told them that I'm going to send Quincy Briscoe down there with a camera. <laughs> So you game to still do this. You were you were pretty pumped about this on the last episode. Oh yeah. You don't remember the last episode where you were wanting to go meet the melon head. Oh yeah. Well, because yeah. I got I do so many different things. Um, you I do. Can, you you're a very busy man. Yeah, I got a plateful. <laughs> well, we're talking about food, so you have a plateful on there. And you you stand in, in a war with one of my friends. I heard, huh? Oh, that, should we oh, not mention uh, that? Yeah, you know, <clears throat> what we're gonna do is let's. We, got, we need to take a commercial break and prep Quincy for this. Okay, no, no, no. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a big-time commercial break, and we'll be back right after this. Hi, I'm Abigail Harwood, the executive producer of After Hours with TC Rastani, and I want to give a huge shout-out to my favorite fisherman, Captain Dave Marciano from Wicked Tuna. Thank you so much for this shirt. I absolutely love it. If you or anyone you know is interested in getting merchandise from Captain Dave Marciano and Angelica Fisheries, Follow the information on the screen and tell them that Abby sent you. Tails up. 
Hi, I'm Captain Dave Marciano, and how would you like the freshest local New England seafood shipped to you overnight? No running around from store to store to find what you like. We have it here at AngelicaSeafoods.com. Everything from tuna, haddock, cod, clams, lobsters, scallops, we have it all. The finest seafood overnight to your door anywhere in the continental U.S. AngelicaSeafoods.com. Alrighty, welcome back from that big time commercial break for all your fishing needs and seafood needs. Go to angelicaseafood.com. Unbelievable. Now, new season just kicked off. It is. I, I've been watching it. It's fantastic. I love Wicked Tuna. All right, Quincy. <laughs> I heard through the grapevine that a friend of Ricky Bittman's. Just a just an friend uh, associate. You know, someone who's been on, uh, I think he's been on a couple podcasts of yours prior to the jukebox. Yeah, and uh, he did one with uh, Aunt Petunia. Aunt Petunia, which yeah. I think is still available on my SoundCloud. You can yeah. reach it through our website. It was, it was, it was. I think the show was called Something Kicking It or Dreaming It or or, or Making It. Making It, yeah, Making yeah, yeah, it. yeah. yeah. It was uh, Kareem DeMint, this yeah. is the person's name, and, and Aunt Petunia. Now, <laughs> now, Kareem DeMint, can, uh, can, you know this person. You can describe him well, better. He's, he's a Hollywood uh, insider. Exactly. Gossip, gossip right. columnist. Right. Uh, I guess they wouldn't be a couple, uh, columnist anymore. He'd be like an influencer, that type of a thing. <laughs> oh, no, that's sorry, wrong thing. <laughs> I read a book on how to influence people. That's how Jackie Gleason used to say it. But, uh, you know, he's out there. He's got his, uh, his finger on the pulse of the actors and actresses that aren't quite the A-listers anymore. They're not quite I, the I remember if, if my memory serves me well, yeah. they were talking about, uh, what's her name from the Facts of Life? Mindy Cohen. Mindy Cohen. They're, bad, they're really good friends, and he's always checking in with her. So if you want to know what Mindy Cohen's up to, that's like one of his, like, that's his uh, Al Pacino, I guess. Okay, they were at a Home Depot or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah something yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> now, Quincy, Kareem DeMint has gone through Ricky here, and he is a celebrity gossip columnist. Oh, yeah? So he has taken a shine to you, my friend, and your obsession with milk and all this other weird stuff. Mm -hmm. What's so weird about uh, milk? Well, no one drinks milk as much as you. Not even all the babies in the world consume as more milk than you do. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> there you so, go. Uh, <laughs> so, so I heard, Ricky, that, that what what did Kareem tell you? Well, from what I understand, that I got a through the grapevine that he wasn't too happy with the, the Kareem. He, now, what's your beef with Kareem? Yeah. Because you got to be careful with uh, some of those kind that can be troubled. Okay, well, we can't, we can't. We have to be politically correct here. Yeah, we can't, yeah. we can't. Uh, yeah, well, because there's know. been trouble. Uh, how did he get exposed to this? I have no idea. <laughs> All of us, I, I got, like, was it from you or, or from one of your representatives or yeah. whatnot, said that you know, he's Kareem Demin has been listening to this podcast. Right, right. And he just, just doesn't like Quincy. Yeah. Well, there you go. Well, I got news for you. He he had a, he had one of his friends record a message for you. Do you have this? I do. All right. Can we now? Now, this, Quincy, let him play this. Don't interrupt anything. We're gonna let. We're gonna you let, gotta let, understand something. This is not coming from me because you know I love you. This is just from Kareem the man. He's got a message for you because he knows the guy who knows a guy who knows a guy, and they put this together for you. Hey, Quincy Briscoe, you think you're so freaking smart? You need to stop drinking whole milk and start drinking a man's drink. Duff beer. Oh, and another thing. Be a real man and stop tooling around on a scooter and get a car. I thought you were smart, but it turns out you're a real goddamn dummy. Ooh. <laughs> was that was that was that the Kareem? Well, it was it was what's his name? Castle and Edda. They know each other. Oh, 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 that's right. That's who it is. That's that's, that's uh, the the guy who does Homer. Homer Simpson. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh my and goodness. Castle Netta. Wow. So they're buddies, and he had him put this together. Now, like I said, he's a Mindy Cohn fan, but he knows people. So that the guy Cream Demint knows is the voice of Homer Simpson, and he's the one who I guess doesn't like you, Quince. What? You have a response to this? Yeah. Can't have that. Now don't look at me that way, because this is coming from me. Yeah, don't don't get that bottle of milk ready to throw at us. We're just we're just the messengers, all right? And don't blame the guy who does Homer Simpson either. There's nothing wrong with motorcycles! There's nothing wrong uh, with milk! God damn it! Uh and milk just happens to be one of my very flavored beverages. It does a body good. Yeah. It does a body good! Unlike 
cases and cases of beer that somebody drinks who shall be nameless and gets a hangover, a big splitting hangover next morning. He keeps looking at me when he says And it. his wife gets all pissed off, <laughs> okay? And you only got one freaking brain cell left, as I recall, in one of your episodes from all the beer that you drank from right. trying to win a trophy. And you won the freaking trophy, but you had one freaking brain cell left. All right, what do you think about cream de mint? Uh, and as for cream de mint, you know, um, I got to be very careful on who I take on my shows because um, some people are nice and some people aren't nice. Um, yeah, Quincy, some people hate for no reason. No yeah, reason at right. all, you yeah. know? Yeah, for Just no like, reason. That's another, um, we got enough trouble yeah, you know, um, in this world here, without uh, people being uh, uh, prejudiced or just playing full of hate, uh, uh, doesn't have any brains, you know. Uh, now, Quincy, uh, Kareem Durant wanted to get a bathtub filled with milk and swim with you in it. Yeah. What, are you crazy? Listen, maybe next week he might call in here just like Bull called in tonight. Well, you can swim around in your bathtub full of beer. Um, no, milk, milk. Uh, Listen, leave me out of this. Or milk. <laughs> or, um, I mean, where's he supposed to dip his donuts? <laughs> but uh, remind you that my milk is nice, uh, ideal temperature, but milk... Um, just be careful. Um, Don't explode here, Quincy. Your face is red as a tomato right now. I think, I think uh, Kareem shook him to his foundation. So, ugh, why don't we just leave it alone at that? Right. You know, uh, I think you got a new enemy here. You got rid of that guy. What was that guy's name? Uh, oh, it was uh, uh, Q West. Remember, oh, yeah. Remember Q West? Hated, mm -hmm. hated Batman and whatnot? Yeah, well, hey, Crusaders, let me remind you. Crime never pays. And as for uh, Queen the Mint, you know, um, you know, you're going to learn the hard way about the Cape Crusader. You know, you're going to say the wrong thing, and uh, someone's going to come up to you, um... But being one uh, that we uh, we will answer your call if you're in trouble. Uh, but maybe you should be very careful about what you say about the Cape Crusader. Ooh, them is some fighting words there. Yeah, well, maybe maybe next week. What do you think, <clears throat> TC? Maybe if if, if, we, if you can track down Kareem. Well, he can call from the West Coast, and you can get him in on the phone. I don't know if Quincy will talk to him though. We'll 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 see what we can we can muster here. All right. I mean, uh, if he's listening to Quincy, he's got to be listening to me, too. So uh, I'm gonna just going to uh, keep my uh, head down low. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did find out that uh, Kareem Dement really does like you, Jeff, oh. because of all your uh, interactions with the celebrities. He oh, does. Cool. He, you're an inside yeah. source. He, he wants to partake in your sharpie knowledge. Yeah. Oh, well, there's, uh, I, I do have plenty of that. <laughs> and speaking of that, you may be going after one of your uh, icons Ooh. from Police Academy this weekend. That's true. Don't want to jinx it. Like, uh, but uh, yeah, ah, I'm going right. to be, uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, try to, uh, yeah, try to uh, like uh, catch up with uh, one of my idols, Mr. Bob Goldthwait. He's going to be uh, up at the comedy. I'm going to go, I'm going to go up there and snoop around, see what kind of trouble I can get into. Wow, nice. I know we'll have a camera on 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 site with you, so we can get any little. Little footage action. Dice there. is coming back soon. He's coming a week from Friday. You guys going to get him? We might. Nice. We might as well. But you know, Jeff has had many experience, like we mentioned on the show a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Quincy, I heard you're going on this little uh, uh, trip to get Bobcat Goldthwait. Yeah, uh, well, uh, we'll have a little fun. Yeah, we we'll, uh, go meet this guy, uh, Bobcat. You now, uh, right. This is a little uh, the good personal because uh, he did this movie. He, uh, he's, uh, he's not just a fine actor, well, <laughs> if you could say that, but he's, uh, <laughs> he's also directed a few movies over the years. One of the, his first uh, things that he directed was a movie called Shakes the Clown. Uh, oh. he's, he wrote this movie, directed it, and starred in it himself, uh, <clears throat> where he played an alcoholic clown that gets uh, framed for a murder gig and everything. And he, uh, a, lo what, a lot of people don't know this, but... Uh, uh, Robin Williams actually discovered uh, 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 Bobcat Goldthwait back really? in the day. Yeah, b b back in L.A. and everything, and uh, kind of took him under his wing, introduced him to uh, some people. So uh, the Robin Williams is actually in the movie Shakes the Clown. He actually plays a mime because when the uh, when the cops are after him, chasing him, he hides out in a mime studio. <laughs> so uh, like and, and, and like uh, and Robin Williams plays the uh, the the leader of the mimes, and then and they're protecting him. But uh, it's an interesting movie. But uh. Yeah, they were good friends back in the day, and um, but uh, yeah, it, like uh, this is uh, going to be a like uh, 
Yeah, very special to me. Like uh, the opening scene in Shakes the Clown, it, like uh, this movie has uh, more vomit scenes than yeah. any other movie ever made. And the opening mm-hmm. scene is, is uh, he's passed out uh, after a birthday party that, uh, that like went on all night and he uh, had sex with Florence Henderson, Mrs. Brady. Nice. <laughs> now, didn't he whore her up in this movie? Oh, yeah, they certainly did. They made her, yeah, they made her look like a, 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 the clown hoe. She's she uh, she wakes up with a hickey on her neck and everything and the, the clown makeup all over her lips and everything. Isn't that great that she had a sense of humor like that when oh, most people were like, oh, yeah, I'm not yeah, doing yeah. that. Now, when she came out and dressed as a hoarder, they go, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, she had some great lines in this and uh, oh, a lot of great lines in it. But uh, Shakes the Clown, it was uh, very, uh, yeah, very uh, a good movie about alcoholic clowns and uh, <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to the bad ones. <laughs> Unbelievable. So hopefully good luck with you guys on your little quest there for Bobcat Goldthwait. Nice. Now, Quincy, I noticed the blood pressure is turned down a little. Yeah, okay? you're all calm now. <laughs> so why don't you wrap up the show for us? Well, thank you for watching this very uh, different, I guess, but maybe a call unique <laughs> later on of um, this show here. So, but like a good host, I will say drive very carefully. Mm-hmm. Uh, unlike some people out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> And we hope to see you Mm -hmm. again soon. And remember, we never never close. close.